Hi, right, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Saturday over here at the Atlantic. I don't even know what happened out here. Something died. It looks like some creature died out here. I don't even know. But we're focusing on Hurricane Irene over here entering North Carolina. This is the floater loop showing the core of the hurricane moving right on shore into the outer banks now. Fairly close to Moorhead City is where this came ashore at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. This was declared to make landfall. And you can see that the hurricane presentation in general remains very robust with lots of outflow around the outside of the system here. The core has been struggling with dry air its whole life. And this is something that kept the eye from existing yesterday in a strong way. We had no real eye wall with this. Strong bands wrapping around the center and what could be called an eye wall this morning, but this hurricane is now in its gradual weakening stage, but this is still a potent storm. This is the radar out of Moorhead City showing that the radar tower is still up, which is great news, and we have the eye that moved on shore here, moving north-northeast. We'll be passing fairly close to Elizabeth City on its way up, straight up the coastline here into the mid-Atlantic states. Winds at Cape Hatteras right now, sustained at 60 gusts to 80 last I looked, which was about a half hour ago. And we've probably got even stronger winds to hurricane force over here in the northern eye wall. And this is just going to continue moving up. And look, folks, this is a category one hurricane. And folks that left here are probably wondering why some of them, because North Carolina can deal with a cat one. We know that North Carolina can hold their own. They've dealt with this before. And the reality here is that North Carolina is very lucky. The fact that myself and the Hurricane Center yesterday were predicting a low-end Cat 3 here speaks to the fact that this looked like it should have been there. Right now, the pressure in this hurricane is 952 millibars. That's the central pressure. This is generally a pressure typical of a strong Category 3 hurricane, a major hurricane that if it had a tight core would have major hurricane winds here and we'd be talking about a major hurricane landfall on the United States, the first in a very long time. And this is something that North Carolina is getting lucky with and the coast farther north is not going to get so lucky because despite that it's a cat one now, the fact that the pressure is so low and the wind field is so large is that this is going to move up and not going to weaken very much and this is going to stay a strong storm that folks in this area haven't seen in a while. It's been since about you know, Bob in 1991 since they've had a hurricane up this way and this is reflected by the NHC forecast. 85 mile per hour winds right now, they still have it a hurricane way up here in Connecticut. That shows how slow it's going to weaken as it rides up the coast here due to its size and the amount of energy involved. It's 952 millibars and with the circulation this large, that means there's a large area of low pressure in here, which means there's a lot of air mass that has to come in to fill this up and bring it up to the point where the winds can weaken off to tropical storm force. And we're going to be seeing hurricane force winds possibly all the way up the coast here, right into New York City. And we'll see this ride right up the coast here, straight into western Long Island. And this track is pretty much set in stone here. And this is, you know, this has been declared to be one of the worst storms of our lifetime up in here. And we're going to have to see what actually happens. We've got a storm surge characteristic of a Category 3 due to the storm's size coming up the coast in here. This could be pretty bad. The NHC has a 4 to 8, four to eight foot storm surge all along this coastline over here to Cape Cod from the Virginia-North Carolina border. This could wipe away some stuff on the Jersey Shore and even in Long Island here. This is not something to play around with. And, you know, they're doing evacuations in New York City for the first time in history and all that. Folks are taking this seriously. The government is taking this seriously. This is going to be a bad storm up here, and folks should not let their guard down at all from this. North Carolina, they're going to make it, guys. They're used to this kind of thing, but the folks up here are not used to this. So this is going to be brand new for some people, and we're going to have a bad storm in this area that could still be an over a billion dollar disaster, and so this is nothing to sneeze at. This is the water vapor imagery of the Northwest Atlantic. We have Irene right here near the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and we have this shortwave trough coming across southern Canada here, swinging off this way, moving off pretty far to the north here, trailing weakness behind, and it's encountering resistance from this ridge out in the Northwest Atlantic, and as the shortwave comes across, we're going to be generating a very strong jet stream off to the north, just near New England over here, and if we look at the model forecast out of the GFS, 200 millibar winds, 30 hours out, the surface center of Irene is somewhere near the Jersey coast here, and you can see the very strong jet stream 
stream that is developing to the north of the storm and this is really helping in to influence it baroclinically and could also help this keep its intensity for a pretty long time because look at all this air getting pumped out of the system here, allowing air pressures to stay fairly low in here. If we had an extratropical cyclone sitting in this location instead of Irene, we would be looking for strengthening here as air gets taken out via this jet stream, which takes away air mass and lowers the air pressure and allows the storm to remain strong in here. So there's baroclinic help that will be coming Irene's way, helping this to stay a potent storm coming up in here. And all the global models keep the pressure fairly low up in here, pretty low down in the 960s of millibars, even up here as it moves into New England, and this is going to be something that could still generate a lot of wind. You know, if you're in skyscrapers in New York, those winds several floors up are going to be way over the Cat 1 threshold, possibly, once you get up into the flight level area. We show the recon images once in a while, where the flight, flight level winds are a good 10, 20 knots higher than they are at the surface. So that means if you're high up in a building, it's going to be pretty bad there, and that's why we could get, you know, a couple windows blown out here and there and things like that in these big cities. There's so many people in the way of this that it's going to cause some damage. And one of the bigger issues with the system will be water. Even if the wind damage is minimal as this moves up the coast, this whole area here is 6 to 10 inches of rain moving up into areas that have already been saturated this month. And we already have storm totals of over 6 inches in this entire red area on the radar in North Carolina. These darker red and purple regions are over 10 inches of rain already falling in North Carolina. This is only going to be the story all the way up the eastern seaboard here as heavy rains fall in the corridor right up the coast through New Jersey, New York, and on into New England. And this could cause some inland flooding issues, not to mention the storm surge issues along the coastline, also bringing flooding to areas along the coast. So there is a lot to worry about with the system here. And this is not over by any means. This is going to be maintaining intensity like we are not used to seeing with a hurricane like this moving up the coast. We would expect it to be rapidly filling in here, moving up. It has been maintaining its central pressure ever since yesterday, which is fairly miraculous given that dry air has completely eaten its core alive here, did not allow those Cat 3 winds to develop near the eye and make it to the surface. So North Carolina is getting off lucky today, and we hope and pray that folks in here are safe and alive and that their property is not too damaged in here. North Carolina has been through this before. I'm sure they will be okay. Folks up here are not so used to this, so this is going to be an interesting event. Hopefully everyone is going to be safe up here, but there are so many millions of people in the way. There's going to be some damages with this, and hopefully they are not as severe as they are expected to be. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.